Ons het vanmorgen die voorrecht om te gesels met Jacques van Emden van Blok. Maar een beetje achtergrond eerste. Baie mense stap teen uh, sy nevel of leeuwkop en, en, en is bekommerd oor hulle veiligheid, omdat daar al reeds in die verlede incidente was daar. Maar Jacques van Emden, die CEO van Blok, en sy een paar andere maatschappijen in die omgeving het besluit om handen te neem en een, een project te begin om die plek te beskerm en het makkelijker te maken vir mense wat daar stap of draf. Ons gesels morgen om. Good morning, Jacques. Morning, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you here this morning. Jacques, let's start first with the statistics. Let's start with the history. Let's start for the reason. Uh, uh, tell us more about how how hikers and, and, and people with recreational activities on, 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 on Lion's Head and Signal Hill, how they experienced their safety uh, a couple of, uh, some time ago. Yeah, so it's it's obviously extremely disappointing um, to, to talk about the history. Um, we're not sure of what the root causes were, but uh, in the late kind of 2010s and 2015s and around that area, there started to be some reporting of criminal activity um, on the Table Mountain Nature Reserve. And over time, it's unfortunately escalated. Um, it could be a response to any number of challenges. Certainly, they saw substantial spikes um, during COVID, which might have related to the substantial amount of uh, short-term unemployment that we experienced in that period of time. And the, the real fundamental was that it was appearing all over the mountain. So it wasn't something that was uh, linked to a specific neighborhood or a specific area. Mm. It appeared as though um, criminal networks uh, had established that they were able to conduct criminal activity and not have the risk of being caught, which obviously encouraged them to continue to do it. I think what was very unfortunate is over the past few years that started to become a little bit more violent in its nature. Mm. Historically, it was quite... Um, uh, very low levels of violence within the contact crime, and there was very little reports of physical injury. That's unfortunately changed, and it precipitated the desire to try get involved in a project that would actually look at securing the area. Because, I mean, from our perspective, a huge part of Cape Town is the Table Mountain Nature Reserve. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's part of our identity and our character, and not being able to, to utilize it for fear of safety is just, it's, it's just, an extremely unfortunate situation to be in. Besides for the people from Cape Town that obviously struggled then if they wanted to go use these areas or go into these areas, this must have also had an effect on tourism. Hmm. Without a shadow of a doubt, um, if you look at, let's say if you travel to Johannesburg, there's tourism warning notes in your hotel about like what's good, good, practice to uh, to do as a so as a foreigner visiting Johannesburg. Unfortunately, we were hitting a point where that was needing to happen in Table Mountain sand parks as well. So if you were going on the Table Mountain Reserve, they asked you to please only go on well-known routes if you were going to go with a guide. So it had a very negative impact because it shifts the experience from being something that's really meant to be about joy and excitement and coming to Cape Town to experience this globally iconic view, you know, that, that, that they've seen on TV, they've seen uh, in rugby matches and the Soccer World Cup or whatever it might be, and suddenly put in front of them is this very negative um, moment, which is around you might not be safe. And uh, and look, I think credit to to the enormous work from so many people because that 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 seems to be shifting over over the past few years, which is very exciting. But it, it was it was extremely disappointing for the tourism market to have to experience that on, you know, one of our greatest natural assets in the country. But now there is this team called the Cobras Mountain Protection Team. How did this team end up on the mountain? Uh, yeah, so it's a uh, short, we can call them for short, the Cobras, we like the name. Um, so there's a wonderful uh, community member named Mark Sternberg, who um, a couple of months ago got quite frustrated by the problem that was uh, kind of preventing his family and his network from enjoying the natural surroundings. And he pulled together some top-notch security firms in the area, as well as a group of donors to come on board and contribute to funding the cost of this additional security. Um, so Mark's been absolutely critical to getting this initiative off the ground. And then I think credit has to go to Sand Parks, uh, South African National Parks. They absolutely got on board. They've endorsed the program. They're collaborating with the program. They, they've got limited resources because they have to compete for those resources nationally. And the, 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 the system that they fight for budgets in doesn't understand usage as a key factor. 
So they get a very low visited um, reserve in uh, a very kind of low density area. It almost has the same weighting that the Table Mountain National Park has, which doesn't make sense to us who live here and see how busy it is. But so they worked with South African National Parks. They've also worked with some other um, great security initiatives in the area. And the result has been an introduction of around about 16 hours worth of security on the Signal Hill, Lion's Head and entrance to Table Mountain. National Park, so very much so at the entrance where the tourist buses come on and off. And it's been going for a few months, and it's just been absolutely fantastic to see uh, how many more people are using the mountain, which is just uh, really exciting. And I think as, and I think that's one of the key pieces is, is we want to see confidence return, where where families, someone who wants to walk their dog, you want to go for a run on your own, where you actually feel uh, a sense of security and comfort in enjoying the amazing mountain that we have. And, and since these people are always there and visible and it's visible policing um, and it's so wonderful the work that they're doing and like you say you really want to see people being confident enough to actually go and use these areas again. If I'm there and I visit and I, and I do see something that I feel uncomfortable with or someone, can I report it to these team members? Absolutely. So the Cobras team, what's what's fantastic about them is they're agnostic to a single security company and they're actually connected into the remote monitoring facilities. So the various camera surveillance businesses in the area so that if they see something on any side of Lion's Head, Signal Hill or the base of Tab Mountain, they're able to work with the best positioned local security company. So they're all connected to the radio surveillance system. They've also got GPS and Wi-Fi uh, and cellular connectivity. So if you see them, please report and communicate to them. They're able to then liaise with sand parks, with SAPs, with the other security companies around the area. Because I think one of the biggest challenges of working in a wildlife area or a natural area is obviously there's there's not only roads for people to travel on. So it becomes quite hard to try and almost tighten around the net as you see something suspicious. How do you make sure that we can actually apprehend individuals and see if they are conducting criminal activity that we're able to actually apprehend them, get them arrested, make sure that the evidence trail is strong and that we can actually start to prosecute and um, incarcerate criminals if required. So they are, they're available, they're connected, they're very, very visible in their gear. It's got the Cobra's label on it. And um, yeah, it's 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 actually, it's quite heartening for me because I, I use the mountain quite a lot as well, just to be able to see them around the mountain. And you can go in an hour walk, you can bump into three or four of them doing their various patrols and routes, which is great. Jacques, it's such a lovely story. Thank you so much for the effort that you and, 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 and the group is doing. Thank you so much for Block Residential Development Company for what you are doing and the rest of your partners. It is turning an iconic hike in Cape Town back to something that's lovely and, 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 and worth enjoying for everyone visiting the, and staying there as well. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Now, yeah, as you see the Cobras stop and you see the Cobras, why do you see the Cobras? Say hello. They are there to help you to see them and to see the experience of Tafelberg for you better to make. Thank you so much, Jacques. This is Jacques van Emden, the CEO of Block Eiendoms Ontwikkelaars, the residential Eiendoms Ontwikkelaars, who, together with a lot of other businesses in the area, has decided to make a change in the community. That's a example that we all can follow. Lekker.